last off. Uh, good evening. This is the Walpole Conservation Commission meeting of March 27, 2024. The uh, hearing is in person and also is being streamed on Walpole Media. So, our uh, first hearing this evening. Donna Walpole, Commonwealth of Massachusetts Conservation Commission, Wetland. Walpole Wetland Bylaw Land Disturbance Permit. In accordance with Walpole Wetlands Protection Bylaw and Stormwater Management Bylaw, notice hereby given in the intent of Wall Street Development Corp to construct 15 single family condominiums, altering over 40,000 square feet of land and work within the 100 foot buffer of wetlands and 200 foot riverfront area located at 7 Brook Lane, Walpole, Mass. Map 20, lot 115, 119, 120, and 137. Application and plans may be viewed at the Conservation Commission office or at www.walpole-ma.gov slash conservation commission. Public hearing on the above matter will be held in person on March 27, 2024, beginning at 7 p.m. All interested persons request to be present. Contact the uh, conservation. 508-660-7253 or L. Hershey at Walpole-MA.gov with questions. And let's see what we have here. We have a letter from the town engineer indicating uh, what he's reviewed, the sheet plans and the reports, the stormwater management report. Reviewed the submitted information and offer the following comments. A few comments are provided in this memorandum regarding water replacement as well as roadway work within Brook Lane, which may not appear to be related to CONCOM. However, the work likely lies within jurisdictional zones. As after discussion with the agent, I have included it for commission's consideration. Administrative. The application contains a memorandum from Wall Street Development Corp to Brian Martin of Seven Brook Lane memor memorializing a purchase and sale agreement between the two parties. This agreement is nearly four years old. I suggest the board verify that it is still in effect. The application attachment, section one, item three, indicates the total land area contained in the development is 157,373 square feet. However, the project proposes work on a portion of Burns Avenue, uh, private, which is not within the square footage as evidenced by GLM plan recorded in plan book 672, page 99. The proposed work should fall within the areas noted in the memorandum and shown on the designer's own record plan. General. Any modifications to Brook Lane outside of the creation of an entrance to accommodate the proposed subdivision roadway shall be reviewed, approved, and secured by the select board through town administrator. Plan review, sheet three, lot layout. Locate the proposed mailbox from Brook Lane to the interior of the development. The label for the proposed real estate sign includes wording for a stop line, which makes no sense. The proposed site driveway sidewalk stops at the property line it cannot be connected to Brook Lane. Realign the site drive to the north to allow the sidewalk to connect to Brook Lane with crossing private property not under control of the applicant. Sheet four, grading and drainage and utilities. DMH number 10 and DMH number 14 should be labeled as WQU, water quality unit. Units one and six driveway exceed 10% slope too steep, and units eight and nine are at 10% plus or minus slope. It appears these units could be lowered to provide a more reasonable driveway grade. I recommend adjusting the riprap elevation for basin one spillway from 111 to 111.2 to reflect the revised stormwater report. Current proposed water main stops 
short of connection to the water main at Burns Avenue because of land rights issues. A note should be placed on the plan indicating that the connection should be made by the owner applicant and or the proposed development should the rights be obtained. It should also be a condition of approval be discussed with sewer and water. Sheet 6 erosion control. Uh, erosion control barrier should be extended from the rear of unit 14 slash 15 to the right of way of Brook Lane across the proposed road and connect to where it is presently shown southeast of unit 1. A note should be added indicating that the erosion control barrier be closed on nights, weekends, or any other time work is not being performed on site. Show temporary sediment basins in various locations, size to hold one inch of runoff over disturbed area. Suggested locations, both sides of access from Brook Lane, rear unit 13, front of units 4 and 6, rear unit 8 into area labeled as snow storage, and rear unit of six slash seven. Sheet seven details. All infiltration basins recharge systems list test pit for which ESHGW is noted. On outlet structure detail basin number one revised the low flow orifice to one inch degree with stormwater report. Note a one inch orifice is generally not practical due to clogging. Same detail, revised peak elevation from 110.8 to 111.06. 111.1 to match revised stormwater report. On details for system number 2R and number 1R, show peak 100 year elevation. Sheet 8 details on detail system number 3R, show peak 100 year elevation. Detail sheets 9 through 12. These sheets are town standard details. Note number 2 should be removed. Supplements A, B, and C. Uh, no comments. Stormwater management report. Detention basin number 1, pond 1P in the report is now calculated as using, as using infiltration. All past versions did not take credit for infiltration due to the proximity to estimated seasonal high groundwater. Updated test pits should be performed in all recharge areas to verify depth to groundwater. Appendix B, stormwater recharge and water quality volume calculations show significant reductions in the paved area going to all three treatment design points compared to previous design. This office does not see a significant reduction in impervious to warrant this reduction. Provide a detailed comparison to show the reduction in improvements area for this calculation. Appendix B, provide a groundwater mounding calculation. However, it is unclear which infiltration system this applies to. Please clarify. If it applies to detention basin number one, there is not sufficient separation to accommodate a mound. Appendix C, hydraulic analysis and pipe sizing. Calculation appears to be missing pipe runs from several units. You have these, this information, I hope. Um, on page one of construction, O&M revise, ref, re, revise reference to residents at Burns Avenue and replace with Union Square Village. Page five, post construction, O&M revise reference to residents at Burns Avenue and replace with Union Square Village. Eliminate reference to town of Walpole and roadway acceptance. Page seven, the information listed for the subsurface infiltration chambers, the construction protocol, not a maintenance guide. Replace with a post construction maintenance narrative. Recommendations on Brook Lane, the following should occur. Replace existing six inch main in Brook Lane with eight inch CLDI water main to Union Square with triple valve assembly on Union Street to be discussed and receive recommendation from water and sewer. 
existing water service to be replaced on Brook Lane along with Main to be discussed and receive recommendation from water and sewer. Provide mill and overlay for remaining portion of Brook Lane. Recommend HP ramps to compliant condition on both sides of Brook Lane. I assume you have this letter. Yes. I I just um, this goes with Carl's letter as well, and this point has come up before that you've included the work on your plan in the town's right of way. Who who owns the right of way? But we don't have any documentation that they've signed the notice of intent or that you're were allowed to file a notice of intent for that work. The work in Brook Lane? Yeah. But we're not proposing to put the water line in Brook Lane. So you're not proposing any work in uh, these, Brook These Lane. are recommendations by him. We haven't agreed to those yet. Okay, so at this point, this notice that. of intent doesn't include the work in Brook Lane. Correct. And okay. If we decide... Just you know, wanted to clarify meet, we, that. Okay, so we're going to meet, up for the record, Rob Truex, Geo and Engineering Consultants. So I, I did sit with the town engineer yesterday for a couple of hours, went through all his comments, um, these comments as well as the ones he had for the zoning board. So we did, we did discuss everything. We are going to meet with water and sewer on April 8th and discuss the possibility of putting the water line in Brook Lane. We haven't agreed to do that at this point in time. We haven't agreed to the overlay or any of the work that's going on that he's suggesting in Brook Lane. So right now it's just the work on the site. We haven't agreed to any of the improvements that they've asked for. So we will most likely, if we have to do something in there, we'll amend the application and let you know that, what we're doing in there. And we'll have to, you know, any work we do in there has to be approved by the selectmen as well. There's a street opening authority in the town. But I don't think any of the work we would be doing would, would, wouldn't come without support of the DPW and the engineering department because they're the ones recommending it. That's fine. I just wanted to clarify that because no, no, when we accept the notice of intent, it's supposed to be signed by the owner. So just at this point, it's just the work on the site by Wall Street. Yeah, Wall. Right now, we're not proposing rehab Brooklyn. It may change. Right. Understood. Understood. Okay. okay. And, uh, just uh, to so, get started, identify yourself for the record and, and proceed. Rob Truax, GLM Engineering Consultants. And whatever sheet you're referring to, would you let us know what this that is? Uh, on the board is the color up of sheet four of 12. So I think everyone here might be or may not be familiar with this site. This has been going on for probably since 2016, about eight years now. It's had many iterations. There's been a couple orders of conditions issued by the commission. There's been an appeal. There's currently a superseding order on the site to construct what's been permitted. So the site is right now under permitting for a 20-unit 40B application, which would be 20 single families under a comprehensive permit with a superseding order conditions. As you may know, work has begun on the site. There's been clearing, erosion controls are in place, um, things like that have gone on out there. Um, Work's going to keep commencing. They're going to be on site in the next month, starting the road work for this road. So basically, we've gone before the ZBA. We have approval for 20 units under a comprehensive permit. Lou has been working with the neighbors on Brook Street. They are very bothered by the project. This project at one point in time was going out to Burns Ave. He purchased a home on Brook Street, as you know. Now the project reversed over the years. It now comes out on Brook Street. So all the people on Brook Street have been burdened with the traffic. It does not connect to Burns Ave anymore. They've asked him if there was any way he could reduce the project size. So under a comprehensive permit, he had 20 units. If he just goes straight forward with the underlying zoning, he would be allowed 15 units. So he's agreed to try and permit the 15 units. He's had his first meeting with the ZBA to go back, this is filed as a special permit for 15 units. So the project site, the roadway, the drainage system, and everything, all the utilities have not been altered. The only thing that's altering are the buildings. There were 20 buildings on the site, there's now 15. So nothing has really changed on the site as far as the utilities go. 
Um, the drainage basin is exactly the same. The recharge systems are all the same. Um, probably a little bit less impervious because there's less buildings and less driveways. We need to go from you know 20 to 15. And it would not be a comprehensive permit anymore. It would not, and that's why we're back before you, because it now needs a order of conditions under the local bylaw. As before, it had just the comprehensive permit, it had a superseding order, which is still in place. It's still operating under a superseding order. So now he's back before you. Same, I guess, I don't know how to explain it, but it hasn't changed under the existing permit other than the houses. So the roadway is exactly the same. The utilities, the sewer, the water, the um, drainage basin, <coughs> all the infrastructure is, is the same. The only difference is the footprints of the building are different. There's 15 instead of 20. Well, we're just trying to reduce the impacts to the neighborhood. Um, he had said he would pursue this with the boards in town, and if it went through, he would build it rather than the 20. And if it doesn't, then he would just go back and continue on with the permit he has for the 20 units. So I think that's pretty much where we are in the overview. I have sat with Carl to go through his new comments. I am going to sit with him again. I'm going to address all his comments, go through every one of them. From, we've made some agreements, what we're going to revise, what we're going to change. Um, we are going to talk about the water in Brook Street again. We may be back to amend that part of it. Um, I know there's a brook, I guess the trap hole brook is behind the houses on Brook Street. You made a comment about that. So I think we're going we're gonna to go out and locate that. I just haven't been able to get someone out there right now. But I think it runs down behind the houses over here, crosses Union. So it's about, I don't know, it's probably about 200 feet from to here to the brook. It looks like it was dug along the back lot lines years ago, before my time. Looks like a relocated type river when they did it back then. So we'll get that on the plan for you as well. So if there is some impact to that, I mean, anything that would happen in Brook Street would obviously be a redevelopment project doing work for, you know, within an existing right away. But I think, you know, right now we're just, you know, before the board again. We've been here before <laughs> a few times, different iterations. We once had 32 units that was approved. We once had I think the first plan was 12 units, then it went to 32, and then it went to 20. So now we're going back to 15. So we've kind of been around the gamut here a few times and almost going back to day one back in 2016, 17, where we started. That's it. Okay. Um, Landon? So I, you, you're right that the plan has gone through several different um, designs. You're here tonight under the Town of Walpole Protection Bylaw Correct. and the Town of Walpole's um, Stormwater Management Bylaw. Management so correct. that's the difference, that under the 40B applications, you didn't have to come before the commission for those regulations, and now now you do. Correct. So it's a there's some new information that has to be provided, and shown on the plan and discussed. That's fine. So I think that's a big point of difference. But when when you said earlier, did, so I I was so. You have an SOC and you have a comprehensive permit, and you're going to work under those permits still, and Correct. then perhaps switch. The only thing that's going to that change, you're saying? yeah. So you, well, because he can build the roadway because the roadway is not changing under either permit. So under the 15 unit or the 20 unit, the roadway is exactly the same: the sewer, the water, utilities. So he can go in there and install all that under his current permits. The only thing that's changing is the houses. And it's going from, just so you know, before, when it's a 40B, the roadway was a roadway and the lots were lots. It was a subdivision. And the town was going to accept the road. At the, end of the, at the end of the project, the town would have owned the road. Under this scenario, 
it's condominiums. There's no lot lines and it will stay a private road so the town won't have to take the burden of maintaining it. I do believe it's been, you know, I know I've talked to some of the people in the town hall and it's been well received and they prefer it to go in this direction because they really didn't want it to be a public road. And they'd rather it be a homeowners association to maintain the whole thing, the drainage. You know, we were gonna maintain the drainage regardless under a homeowners association under the old permit. We still have that in place. But now it'll be the sewer and the water and the roadways will all be maintained by the association. So, so I think I, I would just say that what the commission should do is look at this application and plan under the Walpole Wetlands bylaw and the land disturbance permit because that's what you're filing under. I can do that. I've seen your comments today. I didn't have a chance to really dig into them, mm -hmm. but I did review, read them quickly. I haven't done they came this morning, but I will address them. So, so right. So one of the main things, difference between the bylaw and the Wetlands Protection Act is the 25 foot no alteration area. So, which right. is so we're going to request a waiver of that. So that should be reviewed. We're going to request a waiver of the 25 foot no alteration. We'll submit that in writing. Okay, so that's something the commission should look at and ask questions about and and reviewed, and then um, yeah, with the stormwater erosion control bylaw. There should be an erosion control and stormwater plan, or if you file a draft SWEP, then that covers it too. We have so a SWEP that's already active on the site. You need to file that for the stormwater plan. You, sh you should have been copied on that when they did it. it was, it's been in place for a while. Uh, yeah, and it's been really followed very well. <laughs> um, so I, I guess, again, I, I mean, I'll let the commission talk. It's very, uh, you're, you're saying we're here, but we're there and we're there. So you're, everything's being really mixed up in the, the plan as well. There's references to residents at Burns Ave, and there's the, there's the new name, and there's, there's old information from past plans that are laid on top of new information, and it's kind of like, a, a conglomeration of the past, you know, whatever years of the different plans that, that we've had. So I think it needs to be cleaned up too. And the town engineer also has made those comments with this filing. It's under we'll, we'll the bylaw and the comments. land disturbance permits. No, nope, we'll address your comments. That's how Absolutely. it should be filed. Thank you. That's all I have okay. for now. Okay. Dean? Um, trees the dark green space is that been cleared already dark green will not be disturbed that's the riverfront that we couldn't go in okay so you might want to describe it a little bit oh, more for right. members that weren't here the first you know, I can't remember who was here four times I'm sorry I apologize <laughs> for that so Dean so this is um, this is a uh, with the designated the river I don't know Crap Hole Brook is over here. It's Pickerel. Is that what it was called? Pickerel? That's it, Pickerel. Pickerel. Yes. So this was Pickerel Brook. So this blue is the 100 foot repairing, right? And then this was the 200. And then and this site was um, previously disturbed. It was found that there was some areas that were, what do we call it? Degraded. 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 Thank you. Um, Paul McManus was the wetland consultant on this site. And so there was a compromise of this is the only this is the amount of area that can be used in the riverfront area mm -hmm. and there's some you know there was some give and take on that because it was some degraded area and some areas that were going to be replicated and things like that so the dark green is the area that he's not allowed to work in mm -hmm. it's just it's off limits and that's the limit of work and then the light green is obviously it's already been the site's been cleared so the only thing left to clear is the house that's sitting on Brook Lane, which is, you know, in another month will be coming down. That's okay. Are you going to store any debris on the site? Or it'll all just be dumpsters and out? What's on the site now? Any piles? The house. Well, we'll start piles of debris. Lou, can you introduce yourself, please? Oh. Oh. Uh, Lou Petrosi, Wall Street Development Corp. So uh, what's on the site now, there was an, originally a house at 48 Burns Avenue with some outbuildings and foundations. And so that house came down several years ago. And 
What's on the site now, stockpiled, is the debris from the foundations, concrete debris and other things that what we thought were going to have crushed on site and used on site for material. Um, then there's another area that was stockpiled for uh, debris that was along the uh, wetland boundary, which is now the 25-foot no disturbed that was full of, and still is, full of um, what they call ABC material, asphalt, brick, and concrete that was dumped there over the years. And as part of our previous approvals, we've made a commitment to the commission to restore that area um, by cleaning it out, bringing in new material, and planting it uh, along the thing. So, um, so what's, that's what's on the site right now. The, the house at 7 Brook Lane is currently occupied, but we'll be taking possession of it shortly. And at that point, that house, um, I'm not quite sure when that will come down. We may use it as a uh, on-site construction office yeah. of some sort for temporarily, rather than bring a trailer in. Um, but that uh, decision hasn't been made yet as to when that particular house will come down. But it's not going to be stored on site, no other debris? No, no, no. How much soil are you taking out? Well, uh, we haven't really determined that, but we think at least at the very least that the area um, outside of where the detention area is, is um, or the stormwater management basin, that all has to be cleaned out, new clean material brought in, um, and I don't, I don't think we have a we have a calculation, but I don't know the number. Probably you know. And then I don't know off the top of my head. And then of they course coming the off site. I don't know. The area within the right of where the access drive that all has to be cleaned out down to virgin ground, and um, also um, new material, structural material, or whatever the ro uh, construction standards require. That will also be brought in. Um, so. We're hoping to use any material that we have on site to, you know, for backfilling foundations and things of that sort. Yeah, so I see it on your stockpile plan. Can you just ensure that this has a note saying, we're gonna, if we're going to stockpile, we're going to wrap it in yes. straw waddle? Straw no, waddle. You straw use waddles? Well, those are those piles. Mulch, mulch tubes. We use mulch tubes. Mulch Landis, tubes. We use mulch tubes, right? Yeah, or compost. Uh, compost stock, right. yeah. Just, same a, thing. Add a note saying, you know, it's sure. materials stockpiled. It might be on there, but I'll double check. Yeah, it same not. thing with your ABC piles. Right. Now, so the, the phasing of this, we are, you know, we talk about phasing, a lot of phasing plans. This, though, will be done in continuous as it's one lot, right? So really, contrary to your lots and subdivisions, this will just be done. This will be done all at once. Yeah, the road will be built, buying the course, put down, you know. Get, just boom, 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 boom. Yeah, just before we build the build. The buildings may be... You know, phased in depending on market conditions, but um, I think the game plan would be to get the stormwater management, the buffer cleaned up and, and done while the road is uh, being subgraded, and then have it all come together at the when, when we put the binder pavement down. Landis, what do we typically do for a 20 or Jack? What do we do for a 25 foot buff, buffer waiver? I've never seen one. I would think that we would want to see what they're requesting specifically in detail of where and why a waiver is being requested. So without that information, I don't think it's, I think until we see something, it's, uh, it's not it's hearsay. pertinent to uh, really comment on, on that until we see what they're proposing and why. The, the, Jack, uh, may I just say, um, you know, under the previous order, I think it was uh, DEP uh, 1120, you know, we had an ex and that <coughs> order of conditions was issued under both the bylaw and the uh, Wetlands Protection Act. We did have an understanding and a consensus from the commission that restoring that 25-foot buffer zone was in the best interest of the, of the wetland resource area. So... I don't know if you have the conditions of what was in that original order of conditions, but it would be what we've proposed there at that time has been carried through on all subsequent plans, whether or not we're, whether or not it was a 40B or just a, a regular, as of right, um, special permit. So 
Um, nothing has changed rel uh, relative to that. Our commitment to restore the 25-foot uh, buffer zone, uh, as we've shown on the plan, and replant it uh, according to, I think we have some specifications that were provided previously. So even though it was a 40B application, there were, the zoning board did honor the, the comments that the commission made relative to that 25 foot no disturb area. So we've, nothing has changed over the last seven years that we've been doing this. So there's a sheet in the plan set called Supplemental Sheet C. That's the one that shows the planting. That was the one that's, that's been in the set ever from day one. So as Dean also asked before, it wasn't clear what areas you were going to be taking out the material and putting back clean material. Bring back what material? Clean material. Um, I think all of it's coming out for the most any, part. Any of that um, ash that was there, we're, we're pulling up, and they're going to try and mix some of it with the, when they crush the concrete. But the drainage basin area, all the boulders and all the rubble that's in that area is being pulled out, and we're going to bring in, there's a speck for the clean sand to go in there. We, we, the, and then what you say... So the, whole, so the whole area, and I know this was a, a discussion that went back and forth for quite a while, the area of the 25-foot no alteration area that you're restoring, are you removing all of the ABC, the yeah, material, yes. and putting in clean material? Yeah. Correct. It, it's our, well, that's not obvious on the plan. So, so okay. it, it, just so everybody but, knows, I mean... Wait, before we, Lou, yep. you haven't been acknowledged yet. So. Okay. Landis, do you have anything else you want no, to say? No, I just, because Dean had brought it up, I just wanted to clarify it a little okay. bit. Sorry. Well, Lou, did you have a comment? Just to, just to let the commission know, I think it's always been my understanding that we would excavate it down to virgin ground and then bring it back up with clean material. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of Rob, can you point out where that is? Let me put this up. So this is the uh, wetland boundary down here. It pretty much follows the stone wall. So this was all rubble and boulders and ABC material. Mm. So this was going to get clear out. This is the planting that we'll go in. And there are notes on here about the restoration and six inches of loom and cleaning it out. But we can we can add to that. If it's you, not clear. Yeah. If it's not clear, we can add to it. Whatever you think needs to be put on there to make it clear, we will. I mean, that was the, this was the same plan that, you know, Paul McManus represented all this information back in the original filings. And he was instrumental in coming up with a planting plan and assisting us on this. This is and I remember having discussions about taking clean fill out and yep, we're going to take. <clears throat> we were going to take all the bad material out and bring in clean fill. Okay. I don't um, think that was ever misunderstood. Uh, to clarify, you said you're going to request a waiver of the 25 foot no disturb, and it's shown on here. I'm looking at a half size so it's not easy to see everything but it's there's a 25 foot no disturbed buffer zone the you lines on there here. correct we show the line yeah yeah so what is what are you we're asking to work in it okay not a not a waiver of the 25 foot disturb it just is to clean up the, the waiver the waiver of, yeah there it is you're waving the ability for us to work within the 25 foot no disturb. It's a no disturb area. It's still so I'm going to show where it is, but we want to work in it, correct? Yeah, and then, then it would be reestablished as a 25 foot no disturb. Is that is that what I'm reading here? It's not 100 percent no disturb because a portion of the drainage basin is within it. And the okay. access. The berm. And the access. And the top of the berm is within it. Okay. All right. Okay. Dean, anything else? Oh, thank you. Mayor? Nothing now, thank you. Doug? Not at this time. Doug, or Emilio? Oh, I think it, um, as, as Landis, Landis had alluded to, I think um, the applicant needs to be very cognizant of the erosion controls during the project. And, you know, that's obviously an important aspect of this. So um, um, until I hear the answers to all Landis' questions and sure. so on, I think I'll hold my comments. Sure, that's fine. Thank you. Al? 
Well, personally, I like this plan a lot better than the plan that uh, was so close to Pickle Brook and uh, we had no way of making sure that the brook wasn't damaged there. So uh, allowing them to work in the 25-foot reserve zone to clean up uh, degraded materials that don't belong there, uh, I go along with that. I think that's a good move as long as they restore it and, and plant it and return it back to a natural condition. Uh, as far as whether there's individual lots uh, like previously, uh, I think the idea of uh, uh, a condo association maintaining the site is uh, as good as long as they have authority to do it. So if they can work out uh, with the Public Works, the access uh, uh, in off of Union Street uh, by Brook Lane, I think that's a, a much better uh, project than coming in on Burns Avenue. So I'll wait and see how the uh, details of answering to uh, Landis's questions uh, are dealt with. And I think we can move this forward. I'm sorry, can I just add so it's clear to the commission that that working in the 25 foot no alteration area to restore the area is, is a good thing and it was approved. But part of the 25 foot no alteration area has grading and the access to the detention basin. It's not going to be replanted. So I think that's probably the portion that has to be clear and that they need a waiver for. There's going to be no plantings. It's going to be grading for the basin. That's, that's the difference that I see. No, I mean, yes, coming in and taking out all the bad material and putting new material in and planting is great. It, it's the area that's no longer going to be a vegetated 25-foot no alteration area. Can we ask where that would be, or is that too? Yeah, I think that's Oops. to clarify on the plan, not so just point is, it. this is your 25 foot coming around here? Okay, so that part of the... So this is basin. the top of the basin. Right. So we're planting all along this side, and this will just be grass. It won't be an access road, it's just grass. It's not a road. Okay. This has to be a 10 foot wide berm. Okay. Along the top. So... Is that the area where there'll be no plantings? Is that what you're... Yeah, there'll be no plantings there. They have to be clear. It has to have clear access to the outlet structure, which is here. Okay. All right, thank you. Betsy? All right. So at this point, the engineer and Landis have lots and lots of comments, so we know all those are going to get addressed. So I guess I'll quibble a little bit about waiver. I've been on the commission longer than Dean, and I've never heard of a waiver before. I hear about it on planning board, and it's usually sort of a give and take thing, like if you do this, then we do that kind of thing. And if the give and take is we'll pack this more densely if you don't let us you know, use the 25 foot, I've never heard of that. So it's going to have to, I think, really have a serious discussion because it feels like a precedent to me. It's like, we'll make it a much bigger project if we're not allowed to use some of the 25 foot. It just doesn't feel like something we've done before. So that's what I'm going to say. It, 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 well, you did it before on this project. Well, that was because it was a, it was, it was a 40B. No, it was not. Uh, not the first one. It's been, what, six years? Okay. So which year did we use the word waiver? I, I don't know. I mean, because I thought it was that we had some comments to ZBA when this was a 40B, and we said, look, can, can there be some kind of consideration? Because we're, we're really kind of, you know, we, we don't have a whole lot of power with 40Bs compared to this. And so we have to kind of beg other commissions to kind of help us out a little bit, if that's the right phrasing. In, in this particular case, I, I, I just don't think we've done waivers before in that particular sense. It's like a planning board thing to me. I just want to show you, this was the plan that you, 
This was the last one you approved and wrote an order of conditions for. And, and what was that, a 40B or not? This was a 40B. Okay. So well, when you granted us any... permission to work in the 25. You gave us an order of conditions. Okay, but... You understood that. Yeah, but 40B, we, we, we don't have a... And then there was... I don't so... know if I have the other iteration. I don't have the other one. But the other one was a 12 unit. The basin, the drainage basin hasn't moved really in all these plans. We had the drainage basin there from day one when we had 12 units, and you gave us permission to work on the 25 then. And I thought when we did the site walk on this, it was pretty clear what was in that 25 foot buffer was all, you know, it was disturbed. It was an already altered area. But we already had all kinds of, you know, we, which is disturbed and which isn't on this. I mean, right. for years and years, right? I mean, test pits and junk and all kinds of stuff. Well, we're trying to I'm, get I'm there. I'm just saying right now you're before us with a, a different kind of development and asking for a waiver and, well, you got a lot of stuff to do anyway for the I engineer do. and Landis's comments, so that's the only comment I'm going to make right now. I just okay. haven't seen it before. I agree with Dean. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Trozzi. I'd just like to address that comment just a little bit because it is in your regulations that it's an informal pol it's a policy, it's not a rule. And you ha and it does provide in there where the commission has the discretion. I don't know the exact uh, wording, but I think if you if we get the regulations out that you have, it'll say that it is allowed to. The commission has the discretion to allow that this work to happen. Sure, we've had we've had storage sheds that were partly in the buffer. We've had. You know, driveways that went right up along. We've had stuff grant. Yeah, I know we've got all kinds of discretion. I just, the word waiver is just something that feels like when the planning board does it, there's a, there's a give and take. If you do this, then we do that kind of thing. And, and here I'm not sure what it is. Um, I, I think we're using the word waiver because it was in uh, the comments the that were given today to us. Okay, it, but we don't usually do it. In, in All right, let's uh, just look at the regulations. We'll, we'll phrase it properly at the next meeting. Let's hold this off any further on, okay. on this because we, until we get a formal request, exactly what they want to do, and on a plan that we can read, and with addressing all these other issues that you need to address, we'll go through them all. Um, I would just have one question Did, on the the engineer's comment about. Um, Uh, the um, between you and Mr. Martin uh, is that effect is that agreement still in effect? Yes. Okay. Is there any? I, I would, Mr. Chairman. By the time we have the next hearing, I'll probably will probably be the title owner. Okay. So if you could just verify that when that when that comes, so we clear that issue up. Okay. Um, Anyone in the audience have any questions or comments? Please identify yourself for the record. Give it to the microphone, please. Um, William Yusevich, uh, 201 Union Street, East Wapo. Um, I'm a little confused about all these permitting now. We have like two permits that are approved. So if this latest one gets approved, do the other ones go away? Does this supersede everything? Can you mix and match them, or what? You have to stay within whatever permit, whatever's approved on a given permit, we'd have to stay with that. Okay. At this point, the owner has some options about which permit to pursue. Um, I think there's still some question on someone with the DEP, is that all resolved or that's still open? And this is uh, one, one, of the, one of the other permits. We've had several permits on this property to request. So. Right, at the current moment he, I guess, has a 40P, 40B permit and um, a what we call a superseding order of conditions from DEP to do the work that was shown on that plan sure. that was approved. Okay. Um, so that's his, that's his plan. Do we go to the side of that, go to this one, it's approved, then go back to the I, other You know, one I've never dealt with a, a property that is kind of juggling plans and using which one suits them at the time of, and I, at the time, and so I'm, I'm as confused as you are, honestly. It's my opinion that once 
whatever uh, permit this if this application is approved mm -hmm. the permit is issued okay. that these set of plans would govern on what is done on the project so it would have to follow this permit you can't go and say well I got okay to do this on plan B and I got okay to do this on plan C I'm going to do what I want in between that they, he's got to follow what is approved which is this set of this specific set of plans but can you can you start the road under one permit and then switch to the units on another permit I think that seems to be a little confusing I, might I, need to get kind of some way in on that um, I've heard of that before yeah that's my question I, I thought I heard you start the roadway under the 40B and then when it gets approval uh, for this if it's houses, a, so that's kind of like if it's the same, action. yeah, I I would say, again, I think when a, if a, he's proceeding on a given permit, that those set of plans would prevail. Mr. Petrosi, do you have a comment? So, from a legal standpoint, you know, we do have a permit. We've complied with all the requirements under the 40B, the comprehensive permit that was issued, and we're prepared to move forward. Um, I guess you would call this. Um, it, what we've represented to the butters and the uh, boards is that uh, if this we d special permit is granted in the Conservation Commission, we would build this project and we would rescind the prior approval under the 40B. But in the meantime, since nothing really is changing between the construction of this road versus another road, it really doesn't matter which one we start under. The, 40, the conference of permit at this point is the governing permit and the superseding order is the governing permit. And at some point, I think Landis can vouch, you know, um, DEP will have to issue an amended superseding order for this design, this project, and the zoning board and the planning, the zoning board would have to issue a special permit and the planning board will have to give us site plan approval. And when all those three things are done, then we would rescind the 40B uh, comprehensive permit and build this project. That's the commitment that we've made. So, but in the meantime, we're going to operate under what we have as permits, which is, and we're not going to we're not going to be building any buildings until this matter is resolved. One way or the other. Is the forty something you you could what you're saying is you could start on the roadway this time based on the forty B permit? Yes. Based okay. on the the superseding that, order and based on the comprehensive permit. Okay. Is that superseding order um, is that appealed? Is that all resolved? I don't remember. Yeah that it, it's been long. It's valid. It's, we've we've okay. just recently. Okay. Are you asking me or are you asking them? I'm, I'm <laughs> He's just asking. <laughs> it's well, val it's, to, it's to valid be, order right now. We, yeah. we've, uh, we've just recently asked for an, it's three years are coming up, so we just recently asked for an extension of that superseding order, and I think they're doing a um, site visit tomorrow. And um, so you, you don't have the uh, you don't have the extension at this point. No, we don't. No. Okay. But we have. The, the order isn't really up until May, so it's like, right. so. Anyways, we felt that it was important to get a request for an extension in at this time. Tomorrow it's going to be absolutely pouring rain. Excuse me? Tomorrow it's going to be a good day to walk the site. Absolutely pouring rain. <laughs> I won't be there, but Rob will be there. Thanks. <laughs> It's a good day okay. to walk it. Anyone else? Yeah, I see what anyone else have any questions or comments? Do you? Second, uh, question? do you uh, I no, think, I do. Uh, Mr. Chairman, oh, I do have a second ahead. question. Yeah. Um, on this proposed site, um, I know there was an um, area of contaminated soil that was removed. I remember looking at my back window. It was like covered up in top and everything. I think it got trucked off to Maine or whatever. Um, if this project goes ahead, will there be additional soil testing going on? Um, I was under the, what I recall is that the, the um, property was tested and there were, I think, two uh, areas that turned out 
that uh, soil had to be removed. I think a lot of them, is that correct? There were two areas and that's been done. I don't know what the uh, superseding order says about any ongoing as they go through construction of they're supposed to do continued testing or not. Can you? Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I can, um, we did prepare a, uh, what we'd call a soil mitigation, I forget the exact name of it, but it, you know, obviously if we encounter any material that might be suspected of being, we have a policy that I think it's in the conference of permit documents to deal with it, how it's being dealt and what the procedure is. Perfectly capable of adding it in as one of your conditions. Okay. Anything else? It, before you go, sir, in, in front of Mr. Petrosi is the sign in sheet. Everyone that comes up and speaks, could you please just sign in so we have a record of who you are? Just Whitley finishes here. Then you can sign in. Thank you. Go ahead. Cheryl Hayes Montville, 8 Brook Lane. So I am now the direct abutter to this project. Um, all the previous projects, were, there's a little bit of distance because we still had 7 Brook Lane that kind of buffered me from Lou's project. So I would just say that the previous version of the project um, there was going to be a connection from Burns Ave through Brook Lane, which would have resulted in basically a nice exit way for everyone to bypass the stop sign at Pleasanton Union so that they could rush right out to Route 1. So it was going to become like a mini Route 1. The residents on Brook Lane felt that for the three homes that existed there, that that was definitely a change for us, and that's not what we wanted. Um, to have that bypass created. So at the ZBA, when we were like, it's going to go to Brook Lane, we basically accepted that fact. Um, so that whole project turned to a Brook Lane project, which was a Burns Ave project. We now bear the brunt of that project. From a cul-de-sac with three homes that I've lived at for since 2008, is now going to have, you know, one time 12 condos, then it was the 32, then it was 20. So when that previous project was approved, we approached Lou and basically said, now that we have taken on this burden of, like, this project now goes on to our street, can you do anything to reduce the number of units? Because to me, less is always best. Uh, I will look out onto this project for the rest of the times that I own my house, and if I see five less homes and a little bit more land and a little bit more trees, then I would be a lot happier. Um, the conservation land sits directly behind my house. Trap Hill Brook runs behind my house. So the preservation of the 25-foot buffer zone um, the retention basement will be kind of at the corner of my property. Whatever the Conservation Commission decides, I would just like it to preserve what is left of the integrity of the land, maybe improve it, and if Lou is willing to improve it, then to me, like, it would overall be a good project in the end. It might be a little rough getting from where we are tonight to the end. But I think it's like worth going down that road. Um, I know the previous project, I had come here and he had promised to do the plantings. You know, I want to make sure they're good plantings. I don't want dead trees in a couple of years, you know. Um, but I think overall, this project is much better than anything he presented. I'm not as well versed as all of you with waivers and special order of conditions, um, but I'm just hoping at the end of the day that we could get to a good project of, of 15 homes, which I think is a better overall project. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, anyone else have any questions or comments? Okay. Um, how much time do you need to uh, get your revisions in order? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we're meeting with the uh, zoning board on our next meeting is April 22nd. So I would say something after April 22nd would be uh, maybe the last meeting of the month or, or the first yeah, so of May. So we're into May. May. All right, so the first meeting in May would be? Second meeting in April is the 24th. Okay. You're meeting when? Oh, 22nd. Okay. The 24th, or you want the first I'm already meeting? here on the 24th, right? All those ones. Yeah, just... we don't have room. <laughs> 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 Maybe we should go to the first meeting in May. You can blame him. He's got 12, 12 filings on the 24th. Yes. Very easy. <laughs> When's your first meeting in May? May what? Uh, Sorry about that, Landis. <laughs> I don't care. It would be the 8th, May 8th. May 8th. I'm familiar for some reason, but I'm going to have to make it comfortable. I think that's, um, I think I'm okay. I think I'm meeting at 6. Medfield. It's a six o'clock meeting. May May eighth. May eighth. I think we'll go with May. 8th. I think I'm okay. Okay. I want to make sure he doesn't have any. I'll be here. I'll be in town. If that means anything. <laughs> okay. So May eighth at seven o'clock. We don't have anything on. I imagine, no. do we? All right, seven o'clock on May eighth. Someone make that a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank Seven you. Zero zero. Rob, when you make a meeting with with um, Carl, I would love to sit in as well. Then you can get two people at okay. the That's fine. We'll, we'll be meeting again. <laughs> I've already met with him once. Right. I met with him yesterday. Yesterday would have been a good day. Right. We'll meet again. Isn't the next oh. one Freiburger? Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. So that's right here. Okay. Yeah. And then this is the continuum. That's a full-size is... plan. Commonwealth of Massachusetts Conservation Commission notice of intent for land disturbance permit. In accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Wetlands Protection Act, Walpole Wetlands Protection Bylaw, and Stormwater Management Bylaw, notice hereby given the intent of Michael Freiberger to perform activity at 1049 West Street, Walpole Mass, <coughs> Map 38, Lot 51 and 56 including the expansion of the existing nursery with associated grading, septic, and stormwater management. Alteration of over 40,000 square feet of the land is proposed, and a portion of the work will occur within the 100-foot buffer zone of a bordering vegetated wetland. Application and plans may be viewed at the Conservation Commission office or at www.walpole-ma.gov 
slash Conservation Commission. The public hearing on the above matter will be held in person on March 27, 2024, beginning 7.15 p.m. All interested persons request to be present. Contact Conservation uh, at the phone or, or, the web, or the website from uh, with any questions. So, this is from the town engineer. Um, sheet two, question the location of the sediment control line at 25 foot buffer and wonder if it should not be located at the limit of grading. G2, the grading show does not appear to provide strong direction to the sediment forebay. Could it easily follow, easily allow sheet flow to bypass and to run down either side of the basin. Suggest revising grading and creating a berm to either side of the forebay to prevent runoff from short circuiting. G3 site prep plan should have an interim stormwater basin size for one inch over disturbed area. The drainage report. No pre-post plan was in the copies I received, so I am without benefit of that information. Nevertheless, it's a simple drainage scheme. Report, util report utilizes a 100-year runoff of 9.02 inches, greater than the NOAA Atlas 14, so it is conservative. Report does not account for runoff from the detention basin provided in the first development. Discharge, the discharge runs directly into the proposed development area. We have not witnessed test pits. Report uses an infiltration rate based on A soils, 2.41 inches per hour. We would like to, would likely benefit from a work session with the designer to review design issues once the test pits are performed. You have this information? Okay. Yes. Representing the applicant? For the record, uh, Scott Henderson of Henderson Consulting. I'm the project civil engineer. Uh, with me is the applicant, property owner, uh, Mike Freiberger. Um, I'll do a quick summary of the, the project and the site. Uh, we were before you uh, last time. It's probably been probably a couple months, uh, something like that, just shy of a couple months. Um, for work that Mike had done on uh, the property in question that he recently acquired its additional area um, beyond that that the existing nursery is, is constructed on um, and we he should not have done that work without a permit uh, he was under thought that he was underneath thresholds to file but regardless we're here tonight we discussed this so uh, on this plan I highlighted uh, sort of the outline of the limit of work in question um, on the right hand side of the plan you'll see a, a fairly familiar site to you uh, which is the MF nursery uh, the main location there's the the roadway going into the main operation and then directly to the the west of that uh, are the two new lots in question they total just over seven acres um, and then the area that we're working within uh, is about 3.6 acres uh, and that's outlined by this highlighted area here uh, so this kind of helps space you out uh, in terms of where you are relative to the existing operation. Uh, this plan sort of zooms in on that uh, grading and drainage plan. Uh, it's a fairly straightforward program uh, despite the amount of line work on the plan here. Um, the area in question is bounded uh, to the east by the existing nursery area. We'll access this from that portion of the site, have a little gravel uh, roadway getting down into this area. Uh, on the north, you have B the MBTA rail line, so that's sort of the limit of uh, the property uh, and any of the work there. Uh, and then to the west and the south, you'll see a fairly extensive bordering vegetated wetland. Uh, the limit of work as proposed is right up to the 25 foot no disturb zone. In the existing condition, uh, excluding the work that Mike had done previously that he should not have. Uh, the site was 100% wooded. So it's just a, a wooded area. It's not super dense, uh, but it has a, a fairly consistent canopy throughout, uh, sort of medium level of undergrowth and brush uh, at the ground surface. Uh, in terms of topography, um, you can look at it in general. Everything flows from east uh, to west. Uh, this wetland line on the, the south side sort of flows downhill. 
uh, in general water and runoff are moving this way and then it's fairly level and sort of everything runs off to the west. So you're looking from plan bottom to plan top, uh, everything's going downhill in that direction. The proposal is to clear all, all the way up to the 25 foot no disturb. Um, to install uh, a stockpile area. So the, uh, the nursery operation includes, you know, gathering brush and collecting, you know, people dropping off, um, you know, loam and things like that. And you need an area that's compacted and stable where you've stripped the topsoil and put down a driving surface that you can operate machines on to be able to stockpile and move those things. It's sort of always a game of uh, moving things around. So there's a, about a one acre gravel pad proposed here that I have um, highlighted in yellow. Uh, again, stripped of topsoil, leveled out so that everything flows in that same direction in a sheet flow manner, uh, and then bring in uh, about 12 to 16 inches of dense grade gravel, what you'd use as roadway underbase, uh, pack that in place so that the machines that will maneuver in that area can operate well. Uh, outside of that limit, everything that's uh, cleared up to that 25-foot uh, no disturb or the edge of the property on the, the north here will be maintained as a, uh, a meadow grass area, but Mike will use those areas uh, to plant nursery stock. So it's the, the nursery location is a good spot for him to plant um, and grow, and he can speak to exactly what he'll be uh, growing there, but to maintain that nursery stock, but all that will be pervious uh, sort of meadow grass surface, with the exception of where he's planting fresh material, letting it grow, and then harvesting it to be to be sold. Um, we also have a septic system at the northeast corner here uh, that was permitted for the structure that's on the main nursery site, uh, permitted with the Board of Health, so we do have an approved septic plan uh, for that. Uh, we dug test pits here and designed there that hasn't been built yet. Right now he's operating using uh, portable uh, sanitation and at the very west end of the site uh, is our stormwater management basin. The goal here is to take the runoff from the stockpile area and that compacted gravel pad which will have the most uh, you know impacted stormwater quality run through a fairly large 15 foot wide um, sort of gravel strip You've seen in the, uh, probably in other projects, smaller versions of this at the edge of a bioretention area. They call it a P-stone diaphragm. Usually it's much narrower. Uh, everything here being so much bigger um, and having the possibility of a significant amount of uh, sediment from runoff in this area, that's a fairly large um, way to sort of attenuate that runoff, break it up, uh, and dissipate that energy. Uh, from there, you have about uh, 80 feet. Uh, flowing across a meadow grass area that will be left um, unmowed except for a couple times a year. Uh, that's a vegetated filter strip that provides runoff quality attenuation so that by the time that runoff gets to the sediment four bay uh, at the uphill end of this infiltration basin, uh, it's relatively clean. The sediment four bay will clean the rest of that uh, and then it operates like a typical stormwater basin from there with an overflow uh, to the west. The Review comments from Carl, the town engineer. We received those today. Carl and I had talked um, on the phone yesterday and today uh, about the plan, and we set up test pits for next week. Uh, so we know we're going to be continuing tonight. We have to go do that um, soil evaluation on the site, talk through his comments in more detail. Uh, my perspective, nothing that he has so far uh, is really a deal breaker, or something that will drive a significant change looking for some tighter grading uh, to ensure that the water that flows from that uh, stockpile pad area will actually make it to the basin. Uh, and then in general, just talk about some of the, the other stormwater strategies. So um, I will work that out with, with him and we'll both, I'm sure, report back to the commission. Uh, but his stormwater review comments are taken um, and will be considered in, in upcoming revisions. I think lastly, um, upon submitting the application, Landis and I, uh, she asked a, a fair question about uh, sort of how these areas will be irrigated. Uh, Mike will have, you know, as I mentioned, nursery stock uh, in the non-stockpile area, sort of out in the perimeter here uh, through those areas. Um, we did put together um, sort of a narrative, or Mike did most of this on watering uh, and fertilization methods uh, and plant management in general. Um, I'll summarize, and you can ask questions and he can elaborate. 
uh, a smart watering system, irrigation that's going to be sort of surface uh, piping uh, that's used as needed, drip irrigation to avoid um, wasting any water. If there is an irrigation well drilled in the main um, nursery site that's operational, I think he's getting 20 gallons a minute, so it's adequate for uh, any irrigation he'll need for the nursery stock that's in this area. Fertilizer, uh, Mike can speak to how that operates, but I'll say that all the fertilizer on the property is stored inside in the building on the main nursery site. So within the limits of uh, what's under review in this application, we're not storing any fertilizer outside. Uh, nothing's going to be uncovered or uncontrolled um, in terms of managing that. So there's not going to be, you know, fertilizer running off uh, on the property. Um, that's a fair summary of everything here. I'm sure there are plenty of questions, so I'm um, happy to answer those. Okay. Landis? Yeah, I think so. I, I sent you a bunch of questions, and some of the information I realized was in your stormwater report in various places that I hadn't. I had sent you a, an email with all the attachments at yeah. once. And yeah, so I, I, can't, I can't do that to the town because it gets caught in your spam filter. Yeah, so, got, you got know, you. That's, so I quickly reviewed that before I came to the meeting tonight. Okay. So I know some of the some of my questions you have answers to already. Okay. Um, and then you had that the fertilizer and watering. But you, no, no fertilizer is going to be stored on this site, but I'm assuming you're going to fertilize the stock. Yes, and I'm going to let Mike speak to that. Okay. But there is uh, in this document, and I apologize if the commission members don't have this because I think that did get caught up in the, uh, you know, the email issue here. Um, you know, I don't know. Do you want to speak to how you fertilize the plants? Just because I don't know. Yeah, I have no voice. So. <laughs> Mike lost his voice. With me. Um, so the fertilizer gets used oftentimes just as a res residual spray on top. So if there's any sort of fungicides or insecticides, it's sprayed from a tank and all this different stock that you might have on site already. Um, and then we also do deep root fertilization. So we're actually not just bringing in the plants. We plan on physically growing the stock on site. So it's a probe that gets stuck in the base around the plant, usually anywhere from five to 20 gallons per plant, depending on the size of it, that gets pushed into the ground soils and to fertilize the plants right on site. And same thing like Scott had mentioned, none of it's stored down low. It's stored up high, it's in a paved area. It's all blocked and boarded in, in a hoop house. For, just to add to that, from a runoff perspective, you know, always, you know, the concern is that in stormwater runoff that you've concentrated nitrogen and phosphorus, especially in TMDLs. Here, where this is actually the Charles River is the receiving water. We're just outside of the Neponset, sure. or just a very small portion of town that's there. Charles River TMDL does have a phosphorus control. Nice. Um, I have provided those calculations in the stormwater plan, and we are hitting... I think we're hitting like 80 percent and i think your local reg is 60 under your ms4 permit um some towns are 65 but um in any case you know the fertilization happens for each individual plant it's not just sprayed willy-nilly this isn't like a, an agricultural application where you have to use you know a wide sprayer otherwise it's not economical for all of these uh, nursery items that mike is growing you know they're individually treated so you don't have uh, an excess amount that's just spread somewhere where it's not absorbed and used. Obviously, they're not going to fertilize in the surface with a sprayer of any kind right before it's going to rain because that doesn't make any sense and sort of let that dry and soak in. And so by doing that sort of spot treatment method, uh, you get a sort of a source control decrease in the amount of uh, nitrogen and phosphorus you get from that runoff. That said, that doesn't mean you don't get some, um, but the stormwater basin is is intended to provide treatment for that as well so so I, I don't think on the plan you've laid you've labeled areas meadow grass but yeah I don't think you've labeled areas so that where was you're going to be growing the plant so that might be helpful and then helpful. showing that the stormwater drainage is going towards the basin from not, those towards areas the wetlands. yeah so we'll uh, you know that was something in the narrative I should have made that more clear on the plan. So we have another set of plan revisions coming. Um, I'll add sort of clarification so that from a plan perspective, you can see exactly what we're talking about. So. Yeah, because sometimes narratives get lost, yeah, but they get plans lost the get, the plans get you know, we go to the so. plans usually, so it's helpful to have all information on the plans. It's true. Um, and I, you know, I, I did go out to the site today and, and looked, and 
So the stockpiling of the stumps and the loam, which is now occurring in the corner near the wetlands area, that's the type of material that's going to be now uh, on the gravel pad once you have it. Correct. Okay. That's it for now. Okay. Dean? Can you explain to me the runoff into the riprap? How, how does that runoff enter the stormwater basin? Is it just sheet flow? Sheet flow. Right. So the riprap is going to collect, you know, a fair chunk of it, right? So you strip where that 15 foot riprap uh, sort of um, strip is, you strip the topsoil, so you're down to the B or C layer. You usually put down a filter fabric and just you don't have any sort of, um, sort of migration of soils or the riprap doesn't sink in. Uh, and then it will be probably a foot and a half uh, thick in terms of its depth. You know, that runoff from that pad will hit that. Some of that will infiltrate. I haven't accounted for that in the drainage just because it's really meant to be a treatment thing. After that runoff builds up inside that riprap area enough, it's a pretty steady downhill slope there. You'll see by the contours, I think that grade is about 4% continuing from there. Uh, and so it goes on to that grass. That vegetated filter strip, the grass provides um, some treatment of that runoff before it hits the, the four bay. It really is just sheet flow downhill. The challenge there <clears throat> is always making sure that you get the vegetation to grow in well before you start directing a lot of runoff there. So you kind of have to sometimes pick and choose. You direct runoff in sort of a more narrow corridor uh, for a little while while in the other areas you grow and get a good root base going and then you switch <laughs> and go the other way. But ultimately it all just sheet flows. Right, so this is going to be gravel. It's going to be a gravel pad you're not paving. Gravel pad, yeah. So, Same thing that's there now. I don't know if you've been to the sites, uh, if you guys have made any visits. but So this is going to have a gravel pad with a natural sheet flow, and you're going to have to consistently keep adding gravel. It's dense grade. You're going to have to compact it. The silts and fines will eventually wash out, so you're going to have to add more. Yeah, it's the challenge of it. You get some info, some, you get less runoff immediately from compacted gravel, but you do get a constant maintenance requirement. Okay, so to you keep guys it are stable. aware that it'll constantly. I mean, I know you own a landscaping business. You have them. You've got a giant pile of gravel there, so it's just constant. And then you're also adding now a ton of organics. So you're going to have stumps, mulch, all this other jazz. That's going to add a bunch of other material. Yeah. Where? So I don't see any snow piles in here. We usually typically ask for this. I know maybe this is not the exact avenue for this, but can you, I, theoretically, the easiest way to plow it is plow right in that rip wrap. Probably. And, and the, the melt-out from that area would work its way through the intended treatment train. But, but then it's also going to have a ton of sediment. Sediment in there. You, after a while, you have to clean that out repeatedly. It's not, not a lot of work. Okay. You okay. Know? It sounds like... I mean, the, the alternative, I mean, you hit on a fair point. The alternative is an extensive amount of closed drainage where you're combining, you know. But if you're looking at something like a, an oil grit separator or using some sort of baffle tank, right? Or just catch basins. Huge, but think how quick you'll fill a catch basin oh, yeah. with this type of thing. And so you're cleaning it out, whereas this, you know, it sort of builds up and then he owns a landscape company. So the capability to clean it. For most applications, I would err on the side of closed drainage. But, you know, that also is kind of out of sight, out of mind. You know, you don't notice necessarily that that catch basin has, you know, 50 or 60% of that sump is full of sediment. And then it rains and you notice because what comes out of the pipe on the other end is terrible. Here you kind of see what's happening as it happens. Um, and so it requires maintenance, but that's what Mike's agreed to. So. Okay, thank you. So the meadows, you're going to be constantly digging in those meadows. So, so the tree planting areas, so we have a 20 foot no alteration zone, but you're, can, you're going to be digging holes all the time, right? Digging holes, planting, yeah, how, up. how frequently are you turning over growing new stock? I mean, most of the stuff we're planting are things that are popular items that we're planting on people's houses. So range on everybody's um, Coosa dogwoods, things that are commonly, you know, you see in residential property. So it's not like we're going to be digging and planting, you know, three times, four times a year. It's probably only cultivating twice a season. So. Twice a season. Digging action, though. Are you going to, so the, how's this going to look? Is it like, I know I don't want to sound stupid, but it's in the ground, right? You're not going to be digging in a pot. You're going to be planting things in a pot. It's like, you yeah, put the ground, you put black fabric over it. And depending on the size of the plant material, so... Once it's over, you know, if it's a three to four or four to five foot tall arbor vitae, usually it's ball and burlap, string tied and caged. Um, anything smaller than that, that might be a smaller boxwood, could go in a one, three, five, ten, or fifteen gallon black pot, similar you see in the nursery. Same idea. 
So these will be in pots, not in the ground. Uh, well, once they're pulled out of the ground. Once they're pulled out of the ground, they're potted. So they can be grown in the ground. In situ. Yes. In situ. So what you're going to do, okay, excuse me. So, and then the loam, are you going to save all that loam you're going to be displacing from this gravel pad? Probably. Screen it. Screen, it, screen it, yeah. it and use it, yeah. It's convenient. So there's going to be a screener on site? Occasionally. So Not a diesel screener? You really want to get into that business, so like, um, if you know Southridge Farmer Nurseries, that's what they do. Yeah, they do. So maybe like once a year, once every two years, bringing that crew in to grind that material up to make the wood chips all the brush, all the disposal stumps. That's the big part of this business. Now is the disposal is so expensive. So if they can take the grass and leaves, make compost with it, take the stumps, take the brush, grind them up, make wood chips, turn it into mulch, get rid of our own waste. So it sounds like the screening will happen offsite or they'll bring it in to do it temporarily here and there. Right. Can we ask if you guys have spill kits on site? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think that that's in there. Big lots, yeah. Pollution prevention plan, I believe. Yeah, because you've got a diesel mobile unit in there with a gravel pad. Yeah, the vast, so the vast majority of that's happening up in the main area, and yeah, that was all under that permit, so. Uh, mobile spill units, you know. Yeah. Kitty pool is like amazing. We do spill units. Yeah. Okay, no more questions, thank you. Bailey? I have nothing right now, thank you. Uh, um, just one question, the, uh, the gravel pad on the north side you're going to have a lot of vehicles using utilizing that gravel pad what prevents them from wandering over onto the septic fields so we've graded a berm on that side um, we'll probably do one of two things either put some large boulders of some kind along the edge of that septic when we build it uh, or maybe some sort of fencing like a post and rail fence um, but yeah, a way to delineate, making sure nothing drives on that. That's always my, I mean, my concern is the engineer designing it right, is that you put in all that work and someone drives over it. Yeah. We kind of try to put it out of the way and know that that area is untouchable. And I'll remind Mike of that repeatedly. Consistently. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I mean, you don't want to do that either. Otherwise no. your bathrooms don't operate. So yeah, no, it's a fair point. I'll add that to the plan. Yeah. That's great. a good thing. Thank you. Good pick up. Anything else, Doug? No, that's it. Media? Um, there's a note here that says work appears to have continued on the site prior to receiving the permit. Is that accurate? So I went by too to take a look. I didn't see anything down in the area that was different from before. There's the area on the main site. I don't know if you recall the last hearing. The crux of that was an encroachment where Mike had extended a slope into the 25 foot no disturb that now abuts the wetland replication area that we put in for the roadway crossing here. And so he's remediated that and started to sort of spread that out and plant it. There was movement of block. So the concrete blocks that were there in the drainage structures, there were a ton of them. They're in this area, so they're probably right at the edge of that. And then it looks like it's the same brush and stuff that you put there before. Um, it, it, is it, Mike? Have you been adding and subtracting or not? I mean, th that's the question. To me, it looks a little Bible. different. But. Uh, well, we had... Uh, Honesty is the best policy. Up in the, where you see the bins, there's a... You see that one that's by itself? This one? Keep going down. The one that's solo. Oh, this one, yep. yeah. There was a brush pile there. That's moved down. All right, so that yeah. brush pile went there. Because it, lo it looked, looked to me like the plows that were sitting in front yep. it was like freshly dragged well, in yeah, front because it had rained quite a bit. You could see the marks where the plow had been pushed. Well, the had come in there after uh, one of those recent windstorms. They lost power, and they actually almost knocked over two of the poles. Yeah. And so they had us move all that brush out of there. So not a lot of work, but a little work. No, no expansion. Okay. I can say this with absolute certainty. The erosion control is in place. It is stable. It has not been breached. And there's been no clearing or gravel or topsoil removal or tree removal or anything. So, you know, you put more stuff down there, but um, no expansion. I'll let you decide I agree. how it's that bad. qualifies in terms Just of higher, not wider. additional work. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I've got. Al? I see. Uh, a long line of boulders uh, yeah and you uh, put those as a retaining wall yeah so uh, 
Mike was squawking out. Tell me about that because yeah. uh, most boulders uh, don't fit one right next to the other and it uh, doesn't retain very well. So I might disagree with you a little bit there in some applications. So um, the way I have this graded out on the left hand side of the sort of we'll call it the little access path to get to this pad, it's a fairly steep slope going down, right? So we have to sort of you know, finesse that slope out. Don't want to excessively push any grading in this direction because we're getting precariously close to our 25 foot no disturb. So what I have here is something that's between two and four feet tall, whether that's a boulder wall, which we've done, you just kind of pack those in and we're talking big ones uh, that you then sort of pack behind. You have to sort of maintain them, you know, the soil sort of sinks in around them, but it's a more natural type of retaining wall. We're not going to build a shea block wall or anything like that. So we need some small retention here. Probably nudge the slope out so this average is just under three feet tall on this side. And then on this side, same thing, but even shorter, maybe about a foot. Uh, just wanted to call that out. And that sort of allows us to sort of work a steady, stable grade down that gravel path because the machine's going up and down there. You don't want to put loaders that are full of material on any sort of lateral slope. Um, and allows me to sort of establish a sheet flow here that continues across the whole pad. Um, so it's drawn as a, a rock wall. It's some sort of re retention. Um, doesn't have to be engineered. It's under four feet tall um, and we'll stabilize it, so. And I see the need because you've got a, a change of elevation like 20 feet. It's quite a so, bit, yeah. So that's quite a bit. You know. About a 7% slope across most of that. So it's, it's yeah, there's a lot more downhill than you think. Yeah. Um, when you're out there, it feels flatter, but <laughs> it's not, so. Until you try grading it out and then you find it's uh, yeah. not so yeah. little. Would you like a detail on those walls, Al? I'd like yeah, something more than just the little ovals yep. that uh, doesn't That's help us understand <laughs> that uh, you're going to be chinking in the spaces to make sure that uh, it does the job. Understood. I'll give you detail. That's the only thing I have. Betsy? So it's, it's a land disturbance permit, but ultimately on this gravel stockpile pad, which looks pretty big, you're going to have various things stockpiled. I, and then you think it's serious enough that you need a pretty big uh, line of riprap here to make sure that you don't go down and contaminate your 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 basin. Um, I think we need more detail about what you're stockpiling and, and what kind of you know piles, how how yeah. big they are, what it is. Uh, it's it's such a huge area. It it feels like we're not so much permitting a nursery anymore, but more like PJ Hayes's operation, which I know you admire. So I mean, right? But, but he has enormous stockpiles of of stumps and, and gravel, and, and out back there it seems to be mostly about that. And in fact, this is a, a new piece of land added onto your nursery, but it continues to be a nursery and not, not a recycling area. Because it, it has a feel of, 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 of the kind of operation that, that I'm familiar with that PJ Hayes has got, more so than so, because you can't plant tree, you can't plant things on top of your septic system. So you're planting, you know, in a little sort of. I mean, it's a sizable area uh, that's left circle. to be planted, and we'll detail that again with the plan update. In terms of the use and operation, there's been. Uh, this is an understatement. There's been a lot of scrutiny as to what Mike's doing in terms of does the operation is it performing as a nursery under the zoning rules and regulations for use of the property, which is one of the biggest hurdles for us um, in getting even started permitting this. Um, and, and to this point, everything that's being done is consistent with operations that you do find as part of a nursery, which you know does include you know processing material. You know some nurseries bring in things like mulch and, you know, um, and, and loam and things like that from <coughs> other sites, you know, but it's being processed somewhere, brought there and sold versus doing it on site, you could argue is sort of more environmentally conscious than that you're bringing it there, you're processing it, and then you're sending it out. It's all done in one location, sort of a vertically consolidated operation. Um, but you're not wrong. Like this is what, what's, 
you know, yeah, so, some more details and, and details and, and, for and, sure. And yeah. maybe some of it's not jurisdictional for us, but I mean, are are people using it as a service? I mean, I can see you've got you know things that you've got to recycle on site that are your stuff that you're recycling. But PJ Hayes, you're allowed to bring in giant truckloads from hither and yon. And so is is it that kind of operation? And I know it's not jurisdictional for me to it's get into question, the weeds though. on that, but that's that makes it quite a bit bigger. Yeah, no, it's all our own material. Okay, so just a whole lot of chopped up nursery trees that you generated yourself. Okay. Yeah. All else? right, that's it for the moment. Anyone in the audience have any questions or comments? Please identify yourself for the record. And, and just come up and sign in, please, and speak to the microphone. Uh, Scott, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Point where you live? <laughs> You're up here, right? I am a little, well, a little bit more. All right, let me show you. Just use the mic, if you would, please. Yeah. Sir. Thank you. Oh. So, basically, I live uh, right about here. So I live right about here, and uh, basically I got two issues. One I don't think is a big issue, but the other one is a little bit more personal to me. Um, it's the the water usage um, for the nursery. I have a private well. My neighbor has a private well. You've got this well up there. I don't think it's an issue, but I don't know how you. Uh... What is your concern? Um, if he if I go dry, <laughs> more than. Um, I think there's always contamination to worry about, but I don't know if that's really a big deal, what they're trying to mitigate. But more usage, but I don't know that you're using a lot. But it's something I would like somebody to think about so that it, I don't get caught blindsided and all of a sudden have an issue with my well. Right place or not for that, I don't know, but I'm bringing that up. Uh, then the bigger one is more of... The operation up there is, it's, you know, it's a pretty large commercial operation with a lot of backup alarms and bucket loading noises. And he sits up high in a hill relative to where I am. And it's like a megaphone. Everything just amplifies up and down. And so the area, I don't know how to get some, like, necessarily clearing for purposes, but I think it might be a little too aggressive in the sense that down in this back area, um, over here, there's quite a bit of mature cedars and pines, you know, 40 foot tall, very large, and they're evergreens. So it provides for privacy, it provides for a noise baffle. And I'd want, and I've written to Scott about this, I'd like that to be more selective in what they cut rather than just saying I'm going right to the 20 foot line and I'm cutting all these trees. If there's one that's, you know, some that are 10 or 25 feet out from that, I'd like them to held as a, an exception and then built in with some plant mitigation for privacy and sound like spruce trees that will grow to that height as well so that's that's my concern if he just comes in and clear cuts all that stuff all of a sudden i'm killed fairly simple. we've had this conversation we have kind of like diversion visions here so that's the that, I think that's okay. my concern. So, to address that, can you scroll to the second sheet? Yeah. So I think looking at this plan, sort of the closest clearing to Wilson property would be that top left corner, yeah, right there, or that cursor. And, and up, that up a little clearing. bit too. Um, well, we're not going any further than that. That's and then it's like kind of coming back a bit. I think in that area, looking at trees selectively, you know, I think we would stake this out before we start any work and say, well, this is where they are. We need to know where that drain basin is going so we have a survey out there. Yeah, yeah I could. Yep. And sort of look in that area and see where, what remains from that point to the property. It's a fair point. We do, thankfully, with all that wetland, 
up to the property line and then that crosses on the property so line. It was about 150 feet uh, from there to the property. So at a bare minimum, you're going to have at least that remaining. Whether or not, you know, the concentration of evergreen versus deciduous That's trees. really the, the big thing. The yeah. shiny year, there's nothing there. Other than those greens, there. yeah, yeah. there's nothing stopping the noise. And I don't think we have any problems so. going down and taking a look. Yeah, yeah there's some selective strategic on that. And the well draw, it's very wet. Right your, your well is... The well, the well question to address that, it's, it's hard to quantify. Groundwater hydraulics is, you know, very challenging. Civil engineering I guess it's more dim Yeah, how do you do the It's one thing that's contamination. It's demand, I guess. I worry a little bit, but it is a very wet area. You would think you'd not have a problem, but... I don't think you're going to see that much. But that's the lesser of my concern. I mean, 20 gallons save, of saving saving the cedar trees and the pine trees. 20 gallons a minute is a massive flow. Is it? Huge. Yeah. The zone fracking. You couldn't even test that. that. You'd have to have like trash pump it. It's huge. It's doubtful that range. Really now you're going to use 20 gallons a minute? That's well, his is capable of pumping it. I didn't know what he's using, what the real demand is going to be. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Probably not an issue. But that was not my biggest issue. The bigger one. Is you know, saving some of those bigger trees back there that can't replace really, you know. that corner, you know, I think is probably the least useful well, of what's yeah. in the limit of work. So we can look at that. Right, well, so it's not what, just that how are you corner. Going to, how are you going to address this? Uh, like, so I'm going to be out on site next Tuesday with the town engineer to do soil testing okay. in this area. Um, Mike will be out there too. We'll go take a look. So we got to. I have to situate myself in that specific area to know sort of what's there now, so I can't answer that question now. But can I but can I ask? So sorry, Jack. Go ahead. The the area between the basin and the um, gravel pad, that area is going to be also plantings. Uh, right now, it's a vegetative filter strip, so that's not. So it's just the vegetative because yeah. it just seems like quite a distance that you have the basin. You well, know, way, way limited. down there in the corner. So we wanted a sizable gravel pad, but, you know, you don't if you create more pavement, you know, it's a bigger issue. You but know. you could bring the basin closer to the pad. You have a quite a, quite a large vegetative strip. That area might be, you know, vegetation with root balls and things like that. You know, the, the required vegetative filter strip to operate properly is only 50 feet, which is probably from the sediment four bay to that interior property line where the curse is sitting right now. So from there back, that area is available to stockpile things like, you know, not, not things like, um, not snow, <laughs> not, not things like, um, you know, uh, loam piles or aggregate or stumps or mulch or anything like that. But after material that's been grown on site, you know, like an arborvitae has been extracted and balled and is being kept uh, just awaiting transportation to whoever is going to receive that, that location is a fair place to put that material. So that might be where that stuff is located because you're not excavating, uh, you're not tracking with heavy machinery. Uh, at that point, that stuff is fairly small. So my thought is between that riprap and that cursor line, uh, that's available for surface storage of planting material, but not planting itself. So... Yeah, if I can just make so, so that's why it's the yeah, the, it's the, like basin the basin is located is so there. far away down in the corner. I can't say that we wouldn't come back in the future and say that well, we're going to expand the basin to have more of a gravel pad area. Like, going to leave that open. Once you build a drain basin, you can't move it. You can, but it's you know, frustrating. So, Do you have another question? Yeah, I mean, I'm less worried about where that is. I think that's you know way down in the corner of the pro towards the property the real noise problem is going to be more right up in this along here so i'm just looking to not just clear cut to here but leave different things in here and supplement as you go along here that's what i'm looking for we will look in that area this coming week when we're on site um can i join you and sort of maybe this see. could be michael freiberger's <laughs> first stock of arborvitaes right here along this road give me a tester only if we had a landscaping company for basically. plantings. <laughs> well, that's true. You really need to be you know, 25, 40 feet tall. Yeah. Mike's going to call again. No, no. So 
I don't want to commit to anything now, just because we don't know what's there. Okay. So we'll gather some information. <laughs> take some a look, and you'll get together with get together, the, talk it through, and you'll uh, see something on the plans good. relative to that. All right. And then maybe when you do this, the soil tests, I'll come out as well because I would like would yeah. like to see, I haven't been down in that area. So pencil in tentatively Tuesday late morning. Okay. I think we're going to dig the pits in the morning, uh, and then usually Carl comes out once they're open, save him some time. So probably nine between nine and ten, something like that. Great. Anybody have anything else? Okay. So, um, our next meeting is uh, April 10th. Does that give you enough time? What would you want updated materials by the third? That would be fine. Is that, is that, or even the Monday before the tenth, so what would be that eighth? Okay, so but I could do the end of that week. Yeah, so we're doing test bits next Tuesday, but next Friday I can get updated info. Yeah. Okay. Then yes, we have time for the tenth if we could be on that agenda. Okay. What else do we have on for the tenth? Uh, currently, we just have seven o'clock. So we have a seven o'clock. So, yeah. which so is next would be seven ten or seven fifteen, whichever you prefer. Seven fifteen. Okay. So someone make that a motion to 715 on April 10th for continuation. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for your time. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank Good seeing you as always. minutes from uh, oh and we have something to read in or we'll just read the uh, request Thank you. public hearing notice town of Walpole Commonwealth of Massachusetts Conservation Commission land disturbance permit of course Walpole stormwater management bylaw is hereby given in the intent of West End Residences, LLC, to construct at 130 West Street and 25 Spring Street, Walpole Mass, Map 33, Lot 398 and 399, mixed-use commercial and residential building, paved parking area, and associated appurtenances over 40,000 square feet of disturbance. Application and plans may be viewed at the Conservation Commission office or at www.walpole-ma.gov slash conservation commission. Public hearing above matter will be held in person on 3-13-2024 beginning at 7 p.m. All interest person requests to be present or contact conservation office for questions. Hearing has been opened and continued. We have a letter from uh, Mackey and Mackey dated to March 21 as counsel for and on behalf of the applicant the above captioned matter it is respectfully requested public hearing is scheduled for wednesday march 27 2024 be continued without testimony until the next possible meeting all right so that would be april 10th april 10th at 7 30. at 7 30. someone make that a motion so moved. second all in favor aye, aye. Opposed, abstain. Seven zero zero. Okay. And Chairman, just the um, land disturbance permit that was issued for S. M. Larusso and Son, three three one West Street. Um, if if you could re-sign that application, the um, land disturbance permit, I appreciate it. A I wasn't here, so yeah, he I doesn't won't sign it, does he? Well, would you instruct the commissioners oh. to sign it? And you wouldn't sign it because you weren't here. But if if everyone else could sign it, what do you got here? Just one? Yeah, just one. Pass it on. Okay. Meanwhile, <laughs> we have nothing to do. Um, we got minutes from uh, March thirteenth. Because 
just one page to sign. Just one page, oh, the Chief. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that saves time. Minutes from uh, March 13th meeting. Minutes. Want to move those? So move. Uh, I have a clarification have a question. Go ahead. Uh, on the second page, it uh, refers to my note that I noted a snow removal area is the same as proposed shrub location. I think that was a snow storage area. Yes, snow storage. You're right. Yeah. It's just just a minor yeah. clarification. Sure, I'll fix it. Okay, subject to that change, any other comments? I got to uh, pass the minutes and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Six zero one. So we're not quite caught up on all the minutes, right? We're done. I think so. Wow. Nice, nice. job. So the ones that I drafted. Oh yeah, we, you you already voted on those. Okay, good, done. Yes, he has written a book. Yeah, I have <laughs> a couple. <laughs> okay, let's see what have we got. Is, uh, okay, tree policy. Yeah, I'm still working on that, working but it's moving it. along. So. The next meeting, I'll, have, I'll send it out before the meeting so you guys can review it. And so, models. So I, I'm getting lots of tree, tree requests. Is this like trees and wetlands? Trees. Trees are in buffer areas. So yeah, the intent was really the trees in the buffer areas to have a policy if they're in the resource areas, and they really should file a, an RDA yeah. according to the regulations. But more for one or two trees in the buffer zone. Especially danger Hazard. Yeah. Yeah. I just want something that's consistent so I don't have to keep on making up as I go along. The, you want um, to look at uh, trees that are on conservation land, but if they fall down, they'll be uh, affect somebody else. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Because when I was in Norwood, that was a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the issues that have come up. Is, uh, Does it make a sound? <laughs> I was going to say that. You stole my line. <laughs> okay. Um, You're off the commission. Floodplain bylaws. That's flood, something flood new. Floodplain bylaws. It's just I'm just I'm making everyone aware that um, the town has to uh, revise their floodplain bylaws section in the zoning bylaws. In the zoning bylaws. Um, once the FEMA floodplain maps are are set, the new ones. There's not a lot of changes. There's just a few changes, but there's a few changes that um, FEMA is requiring towns to make to stay in the um, flood uh, flood program. So, and they have to appoint a flood administrator. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> well, I, I Any think suggestions the, I think that? the candidates perhaps is the town engineer, the building inspector, or, or me. So yeah, we'll see, see who wins. FPA now. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, don't miss that meeting. You'll be appointed. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Enforcement orders, the Pinnacle Drive. Anything new on that? Yeah, so the P Pinnacle Drive notice of noncompliance um, was for failure to upkeep the erosion control, and it, it wasn't fixed since January, so we issued fines two days, $300 each, and um, that was appealed to Rentham District Court, which the, the date was Tuesday. In between that, there was some negotiation that occurred, and um, well, First, that the original tolls were actually repaired and replaced, and and our firm firm now doing their job, and then there were some negotiations as to the fine. So, um, the, the half the fine was paid, which was three hundred dollars. It's paid, and the erosion control was put in place, which I think is was the ultimate goal was to get that erosion control in place. Um, so the um, we didn't go to court. We didn't have to pay town council to go to court. So it was 
think a win-win all around. Okay, that was good. Thank you. Um, uh, the West Street Nursery, that's what we just heard, so there's nothing additional on that, I take it. Okay. Well, she says wall was removed. Right, yeah, so he talked about it a little bit, though. The stack of wall was at the very edge of the replication area, and that wasn't shown on the original plan. So he, he did take that down and did more of a grade, gentler grade than the stack of wall, and planted it, so it, it's much better. Okay, um, Wall Street Development Pinnacle, this, that's still open. Nothing new on right, that. Right, nothing new on the other appeals. Mm -hmm. The um, Pinnacle Historic Mill Complex, we're still waiting for the final decision from the commissioner, DP commissioner, and then the um, Warwick extension, we're, we're waiting for supposedly a refile, and um, we haven't received that yet, but supposedly it's coming. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and the correspondence, building department complaint. Yeah, we just, I, I received a building, someone had filed a complaint with the building department. Um, the, the complaint is at 14 Peach Street and the complaint is against Litchfield Way. It's, it's the activity of um, cutting down all the trees on, on actually their property, which the commission had discussed it prior to, and it issued an enforcement order since um, some of the trees were in the buffer zone. Has that, has that not happened? So there, he, he hasn't planted yet, so I think he's still, my understanding, and I keep on asking him, is he's still in negotiation with the property owners of how much he should plant. The commission agreed on a certain amount of plantings, but the property owners haven't agreed yet. Um, as it stands, the the final lot in that subdivision, um, he can't move forward on until he resolves the enforcement. They can't move forward with any additional, they got two houses up. They have two houses up and they applied for building permits on two more, the one on the very end of the yeah. cul-de-sac and the one to the right. The one to the left, which is which is abutting the property that he cleared, um, the order states that he has to resolve the order conditions, the so enforcement first. He can work on the, on the other houses? Yes. Okay, because I think they started on one. Looked like there's some equipment in there on the end on the right. Yep, yeah, they've been digging, they've been okay. digging out okay. that area and they started stockpiling it, some on the lot, which we have the bylaw order conditions on and I went out there and told him he had to um, upgrade the erosion control, but he he can't. Right, he his his bylaw order of conditions for that lot, and that's the only lot there's a bylaw order of conditions on. He can't do, start until he resolves the enforcement issue. Okay. Okay. Everything else is under a land disturbance. <coughs> okay. Anybody have anything else? And I want to thank you, Dean, for your time on the commission and the best of everything and what do you do with your spare time? <laughs> I got two kids, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> we got a few more, then you can talk about it. <laughs> my wife did you see the phone call when I got <laughs> Anyhow, we thank you. Yeah, it's been fun. We'll, we'll miss, we'll miss your you comments. Yeah. Good thank luck you very much. Interesting projects. Good luck, man. Very I'll helpful. come back. Okay. Yeah, you um, can be like a medio and Doug. They, yeah, who, they left. Who's, who's back? Jack will still be alive. Who's, who's backing you up? <laughs> Amedio, did you have your hiatus because of kids? I mean, you, you were you were gone for like a few years. Was that? Yeah, I was on for th oh, from oh three to oh eight, and then I came back in thirteen. Yeah, was that um, was think, that a kid thing? No, I think the eleven o'clock meetings burned me out. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> eleven p.m. Yeah, yeah, we used to, yeah. 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 No, those, that was early. That was early. That was early. That was and I'm early. like, I can't, I gotta, I can't We do had so. many that went after midnight. Especially those big developments, yeah, I've been yeah. a part of those. Okay, are you ready to shut us off? Okay, so we make a motion to close. Don't anybody leave yet. 
um, you, to uh, close the hearing. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now you can shut it off. Are we done?